Hi everybody, I'm Scott Roski with Joe's Technical Institute in Jacksonville, Florida. I'd like to uh, talk today a little bit about making an oxygen acetylene cut. Uh, I teach fabrication and diesel. Uh, we'll show you some oxygen acetylene cutting. It's used a lot in the industry today. Uh, some people use a plasma cutter for everything, but when you're cutting thicker steel, uh, needing uh, to be portable, the oxygen acetylene is still used quite a bit. A couple safety things we need first before we get started, the safety glasses. Uh, never cut without some type of eye protection. Uh, hot sparks coming off the metal in the eyeball can really sting. The other thing is I always recommend wearing gloves. I've seen people cut without them, but I've also seen people with big blisters on their hands. So, then some of the other products we're going to be using is oxygen and acetylene. Oxygen is the big orange tank here. The acetylene is a smaller one. Oxygen and acetylene flames burn 55 to 5800 degrees. Uh, so we're very safety conscious when we're doing it. Uh, a couple other things I'm going to be using is a striker to light the flame, soapstone to be able to mark my line to cut, a chipping hammer to chip off slag, hopefully there won't be too much when I'm done, a wire brush if I need to clean the steel, and a straight edge to mark my cut. Okay, uh, when we're Cutting, we're using a pair of shades uh, over your eyes. This is a number five shade. Uh, normal recommended for oxyacetylene cutting is number five. We'll use a thicker shade for uh, arc welding, but for oxygen acetylene cutting, number five is what's recommended. Now, I'm going to turn on the tanks and show you how to set those up. Okay, I'm going to turn on the oxygen first. The oxygen we open all the way. There's a seal at the top of the valve that needs to be sealed up when it's opened all the way. So that one goes all the way open. The acetylene, I crack just until the, the pressure comes on and I give it about an extra quarter turn. We want to be able to turn off the acetylene quickly in case of an emergency. Now I'm going to turn up my pressures. The oxygen, for cutting, first I'm going to cut a piece of quarter inch mild steel. I want that pressure about 20 psi, right about there. The acetylene, we like to run between 5 and 8 psi. Yeah, we got that. Might like a little bit heavy. I'm about 6 or 7 right there. If you're concerned with where the line is going to be or where the cut is going to be, you want to have a straight line drawn. Otherwise, you're going to get a wavy, curvy line. Especially looking through the dark shades, it's very tough to tell exactly where you're cutting. So, a nice white line from soapstone helps you be able to tell that. So, I'm just going to mark it across the surface there. There we go. Now we're good and ready to cut. Put on my gloves. Again, these, some people have cut without them, but uh, uh, that 5,800 degree flame right next to your hand is uh, very easy to burn you. Okay, for the torch, I'm using a Victor cutting torch. It's a number O tip. Uh, it's good for quarter inch up to three quarter inch steel. I'm actually gonna make a cut on one inch too, so we're gonna overpower the torch a little bit, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, there's three knobs on this torch. This one knob is going to stay open all the time. That's my oxygen that if we convert this torch over for welding, we use that to adjust it. For cutting, it stays fully open. My acetylene knob is this one, and then the knob that I adjust the oxygen with is this one. So we're going to give the acetylene a little bit of a turn, about a quarter turn, and we're going to light the flame. Okay, turn it up a little bit. I get the flame burning pretty good where most of the soot is going away. Now I add oxygen slowly, very slowly. We'll bring it in. We're going to bring the oxygen in until the feather at the tip goes away. You'll see six little cones get sharp and clear once the oxygen is set at the right amount. If you go too far, you hear an increased rushing noise, that's an oxidizing flame. You don't like that for cutting. Too little oxygen, you get a feather on it. That's not good either. That's a reducing flame. So we get it just right. Then we need to hit our oxygen lever to see if our flame is still right when we're cutting. Hit that, I've still got a little bit of a feather. So I add a little bit more to bring it in clear. Now I'm set up for cutting. I'm going to put on my goggles. Okay. I should be set to make my cut. Get comfortable. That's the most important thing in making clean cuts. Okay, we're going to heat the edge until it just starts to turn cherry red. 
hit the oxygen lever, we should blow the metal through. Not too bad. What I'm looking for in a good oxygen acetylene cut is that we blow off most of the slag. There shouldn't be a whole lot left. If you've got big dripping slags, you've probably gone too slow. If you go too fast, the cut will stop. You overpower the preheat flame. The torch, if you notice it when I'm running, there's six little holes around the outer edge. That creates a preheat flame. The hole in the center is your cutting jet. What we do is the preheat flame comes up to the metal, heats it up to a cherry red point. When you hit the oxygen, that causes the rapid oxidation of the metal. You may have known oxidation as rust. Uh, but we're actually burning the steel through to produce a pretty clean cut and a pretty straight cut if you do it right. So, a little, little bit of slag I have can be chipped off easily or cleaned up with a grinder. Next I'd like to do a little bit heavier cut for you. This is a one inch steel. I need a piece of it about like that for a project that I have here in the shop. So, I can cut it with this if I turn up the oxygen to about the max. Normally we run the oxygen between 20 and 40 PSI. So I'm going to run it all the way up to 40 PSI. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. Right there. With higher oxygen pressure, I get a heavier blast through the metal. And uh, we want to make sure that we have enough heat to carry ourselves all the way through the metal. Okay, so I'm ready to do another cut. If you watch, the preheat will start on the edge of the metal, get it cherry red, and as I hit the oxygen lever, we're going to blast the metal down and through. Should be a good straight cut. One inch metal is a little thicker than this torch is set up for, so we're going to try to do it without getting too much slag or having the cut stop. Let's see if I can do it. And I'm going to start the torch. Turn the acetylene up where I get a good feather off the end. the oxygen in. Now this time I'm going to overrun the torch a little bit. Now that I got there, I'm going to add a little bit more acetylene and bring the oxygen in again. There. I've got a very hot flame there. Let's see if we can make this cut. Too bad it got through it. I had one little section there at the end where it didn't want to let go, but I got it. Um, again, that's cutting a little bit thicker metal than what this torch is meant for. But so let's take a look at it. And I did things a little bit differently here. I used a straight edge. Uh, when you're making a cut on metal that you want to make sure that you keep, a straight edge can be used to make sure you get a nice straight line. I'm not going to pick up the hot piece of metal because that's a good way to ruin your glove. But I'll show you a piece of metal I cut earlier. That's a nice, pretty clean cut. Little white waver in there, but very little slag. That'll clean up nice, allow me to use it for my project. Hopefully that's shown you the way to use an oxyacetylene torch safely and to be able to use it for your projects. I'm Scott Rusky at JTEC here in Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks for watching.